What will happen to me after I die? Is there life after death? Will I be reincarnated into another body? Will I go to heaven or hell? These are the most common questions people ask when they think about death. And after all, is it the end of life or just the beginning? A survey conducted by a US TV station showed that about 80% of the world's population believes in life after death and that the human soul is immortal. Some say that when the body dies, the soul is released and directed to purgatory, where it pays for its sins until the moment it goes to heaven. Others believe that they will reincarnate into another body and come back to live on earth once again. And there are still those who believe that they will sleep in their graves until the return of Christ. Anyway, there is a lot of confusion about what will happen to us after death. However, all this discussion becomes unnecessary when we look at the Bible, which is the Word of God, as it brings us the answers to all these questions of humanity. And that's why, in today's video, I'm going to show you five facts about death that will shock you. But before we begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you can receive all the notifications whenever I post a new video, okay? So come walk with me, okay? Let's go. The first fact is that the dead cannot have contact with the living. Another very common belief among people of various cultures and religions is that the dead continue to influence the lives of those who are alive and that they can reveal hidden things to them. And the well-known movie that portrays this situation is the film Ghost. But this is not in accordance with what the Word of God says. See what is written in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Anyone who is among the living has hope. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, and even their name is forgotten. Their love, their hate, and their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. This shows that those who die no longer have any kind of influence here on earth, and consequently, cannot have any type of access to the living. Therefore, when you hear a story that a deceased person sent a message from beyond to a living person through a medium or any other type of messenger, do not believe it. Because even though it may be comforting, it is not the person who is transmitting the message. The Bible says that Satan even transforms himself into an angel of light to deceive people and lead them away from the ways of the Lord. In addition, Jesus told the parable of Lazarus and the rich man which shows that there is a great chasm between the living and the dead, so we cannot access the dead and they cannot have contact with us. The second fact is that after death, our spirit returns to God. It is not uncommon to see cases of spirits of people who wander around the world taking care of the living or simply causing terror and fear in movies and series. It is also common to find stories in books and even novels of souls that have reincarnated into other bodies to continue their journey on earth. But all of this is nothing more than an illusion because the Bible assures us that when we die, our body will return to dust as it was in the beginning and our spirit will return to God. See what is written. And the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to God who gave it. And something very interesting that you need to know is that when Jesus returns, we will be transformed and will be with him in our own bodies where we can touch the people we love, recognize them, and even eat. We will be real people, not disembodied spirits wandering around. This is very clear in Luke chapter 24. The Bible says that after being resurrected, Jesus appeared among the disciples, and when they heard him, they were surprised and thought they were seeing a spirit. But Jesus said, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. The third fact is that when a Christian dies, they go straight to the presence of Jesus. If you have already given your life to Jesus and received him as your Savior, your soul will go to where Christ is when you die. This is what Christ said to the thief who was crucified next to him. Today you will be with me in paradise. In the Bible, 
the word paradise and the phrase Abraham's bosom, which we read in Luke 16, 22, were two expressions used by the Jews to symbolize the state of happiness and rest that the faithful would have after their death. And in this passage of the thief on the cross, Jesus affirms that this state of happiness and rest is with him. And in the book of Acts, we also read that Stephen, just before his death, saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God in heaven, ready to receive him. So while he was being stoned, Stephen said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, meaning that Stephen's spirit, at the same moment it left his body, went to the presence of Jesus. And lastly, we also have a teaching from the Apostle Paul at the end of his life. Paul was imprisoned and awaited the day of his death. But he was not afraid of dying. On the contrary, he eagerly awaited to be with Jesus and said, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better for me. This shows that Paul was certain that at the moment of his death, his spirit would go to be with Christ. So in these three cases, we realize that as soon as a Christian dies, they immediately go to where Jesus is. The fourth fact is that the bodies of Christians sleep after death. The translation of the word sleep in the Bible has two different meanings. The first refers to the period of rest that we all have daily. The second refers to the death of the body, as happened with Lazarus, who was resurrected by Jesus four days after his death. Let's see what is written in John chapter 11. Jesus said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Look at this, brothers. It is important to know that the word sleep in the Bible applies only to Christians. Let's see what is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind, who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. The bodies of the faithful are described as sleeping in a symbolic language very common in the New Testament. To refer to the body of those who died before the return of Jesus, and never to the spirit and soul. Okay, the proof of this is in Matthew 27, 52, which says, And the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. And the fifth fact is that the bodies of Christians will awaken at the return of Jesus. Maybe you're wondering why our physical bodies slept. Will they wake up someday? According to the Bible, yes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it is written that after the sound of the last trumpet, at the end of time, the physical bodies of all Christians who have died will be resurrected, transformed, and become incorruptible. Then we will live with Christ and rule with him in his kingdom here on earth. Let's read what the Apostle Paul wrote. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Amen, brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if your body was buried in a cemetery, if it was cremated and its ashes scattered, if it was devoured by an animal or simply disappeared. When the trumpet sounds, all the particles of the body will come together and present themselves to the Lord. Another interesting thing that will happen at this time is that the resurrected bodies will meet with the bodies of those who were alive when Jesus returns, and we will all have glorified bodies like that of Jesus. So, brothers and sisters, it is normal to have doubts and fears about death, and much of that happens because we are not sure what will happen to us when our life on earth comes to an end. But the word of God is very clear and brings us great comfort regarding this moment that we will all, sooner or later, go through. Death, my brothers and sisters, is not the end. Jesus died and rose again so that all who believe in him can have eternal life, where there will be no more death, 
pain or suffering. Therefore believe in the promise that Christ makes to you today. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Amen. If you enjoyed this message, share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. God bless you and until the next video.